guys they weld panels together these guys weld panels together you see in a rough kind of rough shape of a sphere and then look they inflate them using uh, high pressure water and they have it sort of resting in a, in, a, in a dent in a bed of sand this is something on a smaller scale you can see it's just been seam welded and it's been inflated with a pressure washer I think this is steel not aluminium you can see water start to squirt out of uh, small leaks but you see it more or less forms a sphere so that's something I reckon I could definitely do so this guy's got a load of videos on YouTube he's he's formed kind of egg shape so if I made something like that you can see and then cut it across here this end is pretty much going to be the right shape for the front of a belly tank I mean look at that that's just a regular pressure washer diagram had to look up a load of websites to remember maths for cones and circles and things but basically um, I'm trying to get that length if you divide that into quarters I want this length to be a quarter that to be a quarter and this to be two quarters if that's too narrow this won't bulge out enough it'll stay almost flat and these will bulge a lot so I've sort of guesstimated how they're going to bulge All right this will come up I've been using my giant um, compass dividers, whatever you want to call them, to do this full scale now. So I've built this model and that's made up of two pieces like that. And then you sort of curve it, fold it round, and join it up. And then two circles like this. So one side is going to be like that, there'll be a band around the middle and then the same the other side so it'll be roughly egg shaped. So okay, these are welded, not the prettiest welding you've ever seen. A bit thick and lumpy but I'm trying to make sure there's no pinholes whatsoever. Um, got a reasonable penetration there on the back. So uh, I could grind them down, but I'm not going to because it's, it's about structural integrity at the minute rather than uh, how pretty it looks. So the next thing is I'm going to make a band that goes around the middle. It's a lot easier in cardboard than it is in metal, that's all I can say. We've got improving welds. You see this bit here? It's not too bad. Uh, huge lumpy bit there, filling in a hole. Again, not too bad once it's ground down. So you can see I have to get a bit creative here to get that, because that's tucking in, to get that out. So I've got a nice seam there. Now see if we can squeeze that in and get these edges together. Uh, this edge is not too bad. Right, I've welded up all the sides. Um, my welding's still getting better. This this run here isn't too bad. Bit of a lump there. Uh, long here, not too bad. Next thing is to make the circle to go here. You see, it's a little bit higher here, so I need to trim that. Um, so I'm just making another template. Um, so I'll just draw a circle. My grandfather was an architect and this is one of his instruments, maybe the 1930s, I think. Um, it's stainless steel, allegedly, but it kind of discolours. Um, he'd be horrified that I've got a biro tape to it. But you can see the quality is just... Uh, quality is amazing. I have these detachable ends. You can see with machine slots. See? So you can't put it together the wrong way round. And then this has got multiple leaves in it. You can actually take it apart with like a kind of screwdriver that has two prongs on it. So you get a nice sort of friction there that's variable. Um, yeah, I mean, I've cut this out. 
and that shows me the area here I've got to trim down. Now it's important. This is the important weld because here's my nose cone. Um, this has got to bulge out a little bit. That's got to bulge out a little bit. So instead of welding this like just in a seam around here, like almost 45 degree angle, I'm going to bend the edges over on this ring and then weld it. So the weld is more like edge to edge rather than 90 degrees so that when it bulges out then hopefully that'll bulge out the bend I've put in will kind of straighten itself out a little and I'll get a more smooth curve and when I dress the weld and um, well I don't know if I'll be able to wheel it probably won't I have to use a hammer and dolly I'll be able to make it seem less obvious I don't know if I'll make it invisible but I'll make it less obvious so next thing is so that looks better what I did was actually very carefully went over that edge with the nibbler until there was about one or two mil left to go and then I used the flap disc uh, to just take it down the last bit and that worked quite well. Right, I've just hammered it around the edges using my shrinking stump and just that end of the mallet and then it occurred to me I could just use the high curvature crown wheel here right on the edge and just bring that edge down all the way around and then I thought well actually while it's in the English wheel I might as well wheel the middle a bit to get it to dome a bit so that when we put the put the hydroform pressure in we get a nice domed front end because that's what we're trying to do at the end of the day so just help it on its way if you like well that's worked a little bit I've just been going around in a circle with the uh, rubber on here to just see if I can just put a bend down on it and you can see there's a there's a slight one so I'm just going to wheel the middle now until it starts to bow up a little bit um, and then go from there so if you look at that now you can see it's headed in the right direction I'm still going to bend the edges over manually I think so that the welds are more this sort of angle it just makes more sense so now I've hand bent the last centimetre of this edge down a bit. So I've got kind of flying saucer shape. So, now so here's a panel for the other end. You can see it's flat on the deck. I've wheeled it and I've just used pliers and gone slowly round, just bending the edge over just a little bit. So that when we weld it. So I'm working my way around. You can see how these edges are much more kind of in line flowing within flowing with each other so when it inflates hopefully it'll be a that's my best run of weld yet from there to there yes. right, well I've cleaned up the welds but I haven't done it all the way because I don't want to weaken the welds and have them split when I uh, pressurize it with water so I've just taken like the the main lumpy bits off if you like um, hopefully that's a reasonable compromise so the next thing I'm going to do is turn this over and fit it up with water so if there's no leaks then that's good the only possible leak then would be when I put the, the other lid on down here um, but it seems reasonable to fit it up with water because I'm going to empty it out and dry it out right there's no water leaking on the floor so I need to lift this out really and I spoke too soon look mm. this is a bit dodgy too but again Ah, not. That's the only actual leak. Oh, ah, ha, ha. what's this? What is this pinhole? Look, pinhole. Oh, and another one. Ah. Ah, it was worth doing this test, wasn't it?
I was about to weld this top on and then I realised there was nowhere to put the uh, ground clamp so I had to weld this tab on here yeah, just temporarily for my welder before I could do this see my, my welding's not too bad now um, the other thing that's useful is this tape it's Gorilla tape it's mega sticky and it will actually hold things where you want them just long enough to get some tack welds on um, obviously if you're too close it kind of melts it but that still doesn't matter at least you get the weld on where you want it so that's quite handy um, so the next thing now is I've got a weld this is made of aluminium and, it's, and I got the female one because it's got a nice thick wall to weld to and um, you can see from this it fits onto my uh, pressure washer gun so I'm going to make a hole that this just quite tightly fits into and then weld it in basically now the question is where to put it um, to be honest this this part um, is probably going to be wasted this part of the metal you know I may if this is, forms a nice dome then I'll probably cut it around here to make my nose cone um, so it's probably sensible place to put it somewhere in the middle here I think that's what I'll do so I've filed a hole um, I've wire brushed everything so I'm going to tack each side and then weld round one thing I've done here I don't know if it's clever or not but that's one of the original pinholes that I found. So I've actually left it there and I've put a ring of weld around it so it doesn't sort of split and turn into a catastrophic tear. Um, the reason I want that is, um, I don't know if you've watched the videos, but when you inflate the, the metal ball or whatever with the pressure washer, when you turn the pressure washer off, it kind of springs back a little bit as the metal springs back. But it can only do that if there's a very slight leak. So turn the pressure washer on goes to the shape turn it off comes back to the shape that it will be when it's you know finished so um, I've got to kind of assess whether that's good enough for what I want or they need a bit more pressure in which case you turn the pressure washer on again and also the, the size of the jet squirting out of here gives you some idea of the pressure inside this so all in all I think a pin one pinhole is actually probably a good idea actually um, so I'm going to leave it there. Right, I've got this cobbled together. Oh, it's all just bodged together. You've obviously got to leave enough room for the air to come out. So I'll just leave that fill now. So this is resting on two bags of compost uh, with some full waste bins in front of it, grease blocks behind it, and just enough room so you can see the shape of it when we're inflating. <laughs> 